Chapter 14 Thursday, November 28th, 1985 Once I get home, I park my bike quietly. I figure that after wondering where I was for the rest of dinner, everyone's gone off to bed by now. So I do the only thing I think makes sense. Climb up the pipe by the side of my bedroom window and get in as silently as possible. It's neither easy nor something I do all that often. Dad has very strong feelings about the outside walls getting stained as a result of repeated climbing. He thinks dirt on the walls reflects poorly on us. Also, a lot of the wood on the outside walls is falling apart, and he is scared that one of us could easily slip. He's not wrong. This pipe is not the sturdiest, and I don't weigh the same as I did in middle school. Either way, I get into my room safely enough and without tracking much mud onto the wall or a pipe. I must have made a ton of noise coming up, though, because I've barely settled in and taken off my jacket when I hear footfalls and whispering down the stairs. I'm still trying to make sense of it when Dad suddenly burst into, into the room. Uncle Jack behind him. Mom and Erica behind them both. Dad has, has a shotgun trained on me. Uncle Jack has a baseball bat at the ready. Mom and Eric. Both hold kitchen knives. It's me, it's me, I say, hands in the air. Jesus, Lucas, says Mom, as they all breathe sighs that, of relief, lowering their weapons. Don't scare us like that. What are you, Dad starts, then looks at the, at the open window. Did you climb in? Yes, I say, sorry. So, you disappeared in the middle of family dinner and climbed into the house, says Dad. That's two offenses, son. And if you haven't already, would you please like this video and subscribe if you're not a subscriber? You might even share chapter one with someone and watch this video until the end. I'm sorry, I say, but I had to help Max. Your friend who was supposed to show up for dinner, asked Mom. Did something happen to her? No, I say, well, kinda. Her parents broke up and she didn't get to have a real Thanksgiving. So I went to hang out with her at the park. Dad, mom, and uncle Jack look at one another. From the firmness of his jaw, dad clearly has his sights set on punishment. But mom's giving him her soft look and uncle Jack tends to side with mom more than dad. Luckily for me, mom's gaze wins out. Carefully, dad gives Uncle Jack his shotgun to put away with the baseball bat. And mom does the same with the kitchen knives, handing them to Erica. Mom comes over and rubs my shoulder, mouthing a silent sorry in my direction and asking if I'm all right. Dad's eyes are busy roving all over the room. His eyes gaze, his, his, his gaze finally lands on my reading table. What's this? He asks, picking up the book. He has noticed and scanning the title. Oh, ugh. I was reading that right before taking a shower earlier and completely forgot to tuck it back under my, under my bed. Just my luck. The one time dad comes to my room and how long he doesn't find a porn magazine or anything like that. No, instead he finds the one thing I didn't want him to see. Jay's book, A History of a Negro in America. Dad says, reading the title aloud, then lifts it up. Where did you get this? Nowhere. I'm not about to get Jay into trouble. What do you mean, nowhere? Dad insists. Did Jack give this to you? He turns to Mom. If Jack gave him this, Susie, I swear to God. I don't think Jack would give him anything without your permission. Charles, 
says Mom, then looks at me. Right? I nod. Dad looks at me, then at the book, then back at me. What's going on with you, Lucas? What are you trying to do to your life by trying to become some kind of radical? I frown. Radical? I'm not. Because that's what books like this are for, he says, making black people everywhere think they have to become troublemakers to get ahead in the country. Is that what you want? What do you mean by troublemaker? The question comes before I can second guess myself. Excuse me, Dad says. I'm not. I take a deep breath. I... I don't think understanding ourselves and our history and where we come from is the same thing as being a troublemaker, Dad. And you want to explain why they always, why they always out there making trouble, Dad fires back. Those folks in Philadelphia, you run your mouth about. You want to tell me why, of all the black people in Philly, they're the only ones that get targeted? The government doesn't just drop a bomb on anyone, Lucas. He slaps the book on the table. It's people like this they target. And you know how people get to be like this? With books like these. I want to say that the government has done worse things then drop a bomb. Even down here in this beloved Hawkins, but dad's not finished. I say it all the time. This is the problem with people like your uncle Jack and many others in this country, he says. They have this idea stuck in their heads that they belong to some royal, royal court in some great motherland. Instead of putting their, their heads down, working hard like everyone else, and making this a safe place for their families, like we've done here in Hawkins. They scream and scream and make themselves targets. They put their families in danger. Dad's voice booms into the night and his breathing is audible. I've never seen dad so worked up. He's always, he's always the calm one in the house preferring gr grunts and charge silence to raise his voice. This takes me by surprise. Charles, honey, Mama's saying, it's late. Maybe you sh we should talk about this tomorrow. No, we will finish this tonight, says Dad. He points to the book. I do not want to see anything like this in this house again. Book tape, whatever. If I do, I'll burn it myself. My mouth skitters ahead of my brain. Maybe I won't have to read this book if we ever talk about these things at home. That is already turning to go. But he stops at the, thresh at the threshold between the hallway and my bedroom. It's like a, it's like a, it's like a taboo to say the word black in this house. The words carry more snap and bite than, than I intend. Do you want me to keep pretending we're the same as everyone else? That I'm the same? Because I can't anymore. I point at the book. I'll return the book if you want. But I wouldn't have been reading it in the first place if we just stopped pretending we're white. I'm going to read that paragraph again. It's like a taboo to say the word black in this house. The words carry more snap and bite than I intend. Do you want me to keep pretending we're the same as everyone else? That I'm the same because I can't anymore. I point at the book. I'll return the book if you want. But I wouldn't have been reading it in the first place if we just stopped pretending we're white. Silence hangs between us like a suspended crane. Dad does not, Dad does not look at me. Mom is caught in the middle, casting glances each way. 
You know what the greatest lesson I learned in the military is, son? Dad asked, breaking the silence. His eyes are fixed on, on a spot on the wall, and I'm not sure if he's talking to me. I shake my head anyway. A target is an enemy because someone has classified them so. That's something they cannot change, whether they like it or not. Such a target must have make such a target must make themselves smaller, not bigger, to survive. He pauses. Do you understand what I'm saying, Lucas? A part of me wants to challenge him, wants to say, Are you asking me to be small forever? But there's something about but there's something about when dad speaks in that soft tone, the one in which he acknowledges that he's wrong, but it's too proud to actually apologize. It tells me he knows why I'm reading this book. He understands that I need to read it to learn things for myself, but at the same time, he's too scared to witness me. It's, he's too scared to, wit to witness me do exactly that. Yes, I say. That's all I want, son, he says finally, for you to be less of a target. When he leaves, I sit in bed pissed. No end to this horrible day, is there? Mom doesn't leave with Dad. Instead, she sits next to me and sighs. For a while, neither of us speaks. Why does he hate being black? I ask, breaking the silence. She sighs again. You know why your father calls me Susie instead of Sue, like everyone else? I shake my head. That's what I used to be called. I was always Susie to my, fr my family, to my friends, my black family and friends, until I got to the world. And suddenly I was Sue. I squint. I don't understand. Apparently, the name Susie Sinclair makes everyone think I'm white. I'm a white woman until they meet me. That name on paper can get me through doors that might otherwise hesitate to let in. She gestures at herself. Her skin. Susie. Oh, yeah, but your dad, he's never been a fan of that name, Sue. So he's the only one left, especially here in Hawkins, who calls me Susie. But I'm still the girl he knew before all of this. In a way, it's become like a special little thing. I nod. Your father doesn't hate being black, Lucas, she says. It's just... Tired of what being black means in a white world. He should try being the one black nerd in all of Hawkins High. Mom shifts in her seat to face me. Look, I know it's hard for you. But there are things we don't discuss in this house. She massages my shoulder. But I can promise you, it's only because your dad and I are trying our best to protect you. We're learning how to raise you in this world, but we're not perfect. We're still learning to live in it too. By keeping me in the dark about who I am, about, about my history, we're not keeping you in the dark, no. We're choosing not to burden you. That's all we have, for now at least. But I am, but I am Burton. Whether you like it or not, I'm still black every day I step out into the same world you're describing. She's lost in thought, but finally the seeds. I agree, she says, and I agree that you should learn what it means to be a young black man in this town, in this country, in this world, but I don't want you to listen to just anyone or gaining that understanding from just anybody. So if I were you, I'd return the book as your dad has said. I start to protest, but she holds up a finger. 
Ah, but you, that doesn't mean you can't get the stories you want elsewhere. You'll just have to do it with someone your dad will approve of. Like who? She shrugs. There are people suited to orienting you with Black Life and Hawkins. There's Chief Powell, who's pretty much seen everything. There's good old Eugene at the farmer's market. I could call the McKinney's. Their son Patrick also on the on the basketball team, I hear. Maybe you can talk to him? I want to tell her that finding black people to, to talk to me is not going to solve the problem. I already have that in Jay. What I need is to know that there's someone I can talk to when when the going gets tough. Someone who will listen to me without judgment. Luckily for me, there's also Jay, who I'll see at a practice over the weekend. So I just nod because it's late, and I've had a bad day, and I want it to go, and I want to go to sleep. Mom takes this as her cue to leave, kisses my forehead, and heads back to the to her room. I shut the door and fall into bed. Hey, you guys! If you've enjoyed chapter fourteen, I would appreciate if you give me a like. And you can click on the link for chapter 15, which I'll read very soon. Thanks so much.